Ladies and gentlemen, friends, colleagues and listeners, here we are again, another podcast show. And today's guest is Stefan Brown, who's the Managing Director of Smart CAE. And um, I say Smart CAE and people might be thinking, what does the CAE stand for? And uh, I'm glad I know it's Computer Aided Engineering. So, Stefan, welcome, sir. Welcome. Thank you very much for your time today, for the invitation to your show. It's really great pleasure for me to take part here. So, um, yeah, and um, I'm happy to speak with you about uh, interesting topics about maybe vaccines, cold gen and all this stuff. Yep. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And it's very, very topical at the moment. And I'm not sure. Have you had both yours yet? Sorry? Have you had both your jabs yet? No, no, I have only one. Uh, it's the first one. And I, I get the next one on beginning of, of June. So, okay but it yeah. makes you it, it makes you feel better doesn't it it's a psychological thing it's incredible yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah that's right but but uh yeah i think it's always good to to, to follow the rules and wear a mask and all this stuff so oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know, that, go, that goes without saying yeah yeah 100 percent. right so well now very topical subject and also now as as lots of the world is becoming warmer and hotter and we've got transfer issues and and tarmac heat and various other excursions so I think first thing is let's have a little bit of background about the company. So mm-hmm. who who actually is Smart CAE, and how did it come about? Yeah, so so Smart CAE is uh, founded uh, a relative longer time ago. We we started uh, twenty years ago. So uh, but uh, we started not in in, in cold chain because uh, you know we are here located in Munich. So you have a lot of these car manufacturing stuff and so on. So we started in automotive industry. So yes. we did a lot of modeling of uh, climate control of cars and, and modeling of crash. So, and, and then we, we work on houses appliances for uh, a, a longer time. Uh, and this was around seven years ago. Yep. Uh, uh, I, I were at a conference, it was not really planned uh, about cold chain. And then I heard, um, here are some, some, some talks and and uh, I'm wondering where's the problem to ship a small box around the world. So, so uh, and uh, yeah, and this was, was a little bit the start in, in these conferences. So I walk around and speak with vendors and there was also a talk from a, from a large pharma company, which uh, explains a little bit their problems. And after the talk, I go to the speaker and I ask him, uh, maybe we can help you on this because, um, we do a lot of um, sometimes a little complicated models, uh, but this helps you to understand what is in the box and what happens. With this. So, and then there was a lot of interest in, and then yeah, that was our start in in, in cold chain. So it was not really planned, but uh, since this time we work only on cold chain. So it's uh, no cars anymore, no fridges and freezers. Yeah, okay, fridges and freezers, but moving ones. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, no, but it, it's amazing, isn't it? How sometimes, sometimes when you least expect. Um, you know, you can be set on a different path and it's, yeah. a, it's a much more focused path. So it's incredible, isn't it, sometimes? Yeah, yeah. So, so it was, was really uh, a cool situation because um, if you come from from automotive industry and you simulate a lot of these things and then someone comes, oh, we have these small boxes and uh, and move it around the world. And then we, we come, uh, where's the problem? It's, it, it's smaller than a car and it's not so complex. But if you look at the complete scenario with the supply chain and so on, it's quite complex. So, yes. so we are still in this and, and we learn every day something more so, so after seven years. So it's, yep. it's really and when, and when you think when you think of the amount of money that gets lost or wasted because yep. of the temperature excursions in, in the pharma industry every year, I mean you probably you probably know exactly to the to the euro or the dollar or whatever, but my understanding is that it's in excess of 25 billion a year. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that, that is a that's a that, I mean that that's a that's a, a business in industry in itself. Yeah, this is a really good point because uh, when we come in in this industry, we are wondering why this happened. But yeah. but the the, the 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 problem is um, if you go more in detail, you get much more. Uh, complications. You have to understand all of the physics and uh, on these uh, on these boxes. And I think this is uh, if you come only from the logistics area, you are not trained to to, to model the, the behavior of uh, fast change material or dry ice or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So so, yeah. so uh, but by the end of the day, you, you need to know it. And then and this maybe is the reason that 
um, I don't know how to explain it. So um, you see in the in the supply chain, uh, all partners look there at the specific piece. So yes. the, 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 the the handler at the airport, they are oh, looking on the tarmac time. The, the, the person at the truck say, ah, oh, I made the truck on the right temperature. But, yeah. but what we are looking here, we look at the whole supply chain. We made a digital supply chain of this yeah. cold chain. So then we can really see, uh, oh, the first two hours is maybe important uh, because in this case, you freeze your product or all these things. And, 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 and this is, was, was our idea at the beginning to bring transparency in. To understand yeah. where are the points you have to change something um, and and minimize the situation. But for us, um, our our goal is <laughs> no excursions. So exactly, no exactly. Now, now you, you you've mentioned there a few times now about digital cold chain. Yes. As opposed to cold chain. Yeah. So in the cold chain, and you've also mentioned there the number of parties that are involved. So. You know, if, if, if you follow it through from the like the ICHM, the IATA manual perspective, mm -hmm. where it shows all the people that get involved from the from the shipper's perspective, all the way right through to delivery at the consignee, it's an awful lot of steps. And yeah. at some point it can be anything between 14 and 17, I think, 14 yeah. and 17 points. Yeah. So your cold chain encompasses all of those parties, and one would hope that they would collaborate and communicate and be as consistent as possible, appreciating the step before and how they can influence the step after. But mm -hmm. that's, that's clearly not the case if we're talking of in, in excess of 25 billion excursions. So on the virtual um, cold chain, and you correct me if I'm wrong afterwards, I'm thinking now you actually look at every single perspective and every single possible step, you identify what could be the worst case risks and then you come up with the mitigating actions that would oversee or or override those particular errors correct yeah yeah no, let's, give, let's give you an example so so if you have an excursion in in in, in let's say in dubai or in another yeah. area then people say yeah it's clear uh, there's a hot area yeah but maybe the problem was in london Heathrow. yeah because um so they, they leave it outside in the sun so yes. the, the, the box have enough energy at the beginning, but you lose a lot of your energy then in London Heathrow. Yep. Uh, if you arrive then in, in, in Dubai or Qatar or wherever, where is it hot? And then you get your excursion, everyone say, yeah, that's clear that the reason comes, uh, this is a hot destination. But yep. the problem comes not at the hot destination. Yep. And the problem occurs maybe at the, at the hot day in London Heathrow. So I think yep. this is this is what, what, what you get then more transparency and you know really the root cause because what is the root cause okay the root cause is uh, uh, um, dubai hot in summer so that is the reason but in principle it's it's maybe a fault in your supply chain at the early beginning or sometimes you see the problem starts at the conditioning of your cool packs in the in the in, in the warehouse yeah uh, so i think this is our 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 that, you know, mission is maybe the wrong word, but but this is what what we want to do. We want to have really a transparent supply chain. Uh, it's not not uh, the point that uh, you have finger pointing and uh, this is the reason and this is the reason. We want to make it transparent so everyone can follow what is the exact reason. Yep. So so this is this is really our our plan with the with the virtual cold chain. What we see. Yeah, no, and, it, and, it, and it's important. I, I'm going to come to how how specific you can be later. But I, I did I did an audit a couple of years ago in a, a very, very established company in a very, very established location. And um, we found some boxes that were left outside, just as you described, and they were left outside in the direct sunlight. And when I asked the supervisor what the action was going to be or why it happened, he said that it was okay if it was up to 30 minutes because what they would then do is put it in the freezer for 30 minutes and it would, it would almost like balance out. I couldn't believe it. And, um, you know, when you've got that sort of um, lack of appreciation for something that's so important, um, I think, you know, the actual training and the learning and the education of people is so, so important. Yeah. And also those that are allowed to touch it. Now, one other area that I've seen so many times is even when people are knowingly transporting pharma, mm -hmm. in some cases, 
They don't declare it properly. They don't label the boxes properly. And they don't give any indications that it really is a farmer sensitive shipment. And as such, it's not handled the way it should be. Now, yeah. how, how does that come into your digital, your, your digital cold chain? Yeah, we, we, we can play with these scenarios. So, so we can also really see um, if, if you put it maybe in the, in the wrong conditions in your warehouse or if you have maybe the wrong transport, uh, what is the reason for this? And we had one case really at the beginning of the Corona situation because um, people ask us, uh, oh, our supply chain is disrupted. So yeah. what should we do? And there was one scenario, um, okay, we know we will miss our, our flight in Frankfurt. Yep. Um, should we uh, take the, the box and put it in the, in, the, in the temperature control warehouse or should we leave it outside? And we can, we, we, and this was a, a highly important shipment. Yep. And, and, and it was really straightforward to say from the simulation, uh, leave it outside. Put it not in the warehouse at five degrees because yeah. then you can uh, look in slow motion how your product will die uh, if you put it in this, in this five degree warehouse. Uh, because you, 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 your box was so good, uh, yeah. it was no problem. But if you have a box which can survive at hot destinations and yeah. you put it in a, in a five degree warehouse, maybe your idea was not bad because it's a two to eight product, but um, the, the, the box can live at 40 degrees, then it's not a good idea to put it at a five degree warehouse. And I think this is what, 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 what you can do here. So you can really uh, try it out and, and, and give solutions on a, on a very short notice. So I think this is what we saw here in the Corona situation, especially um, time scale has changed. Sometimes people in the past say, oh, yeah, we make a lane risk assessment and we want to ship uh, in summer. Uh, and we are now in winter. Um, so now we have the scenario, okay, we want to ship next week from China to Brazil. Yeah. Uh, what should we do? What happens uh, if we have a stop? What happens if we get not the right box because our vendor is out of stock or all these things? So, so uh, this is now a, a totally different scenario. We, we, we really do on, on, on a very short notice, um, a lane risk assessment and, and, and give uh, advice. Okay, if you do this, your risk is half a percent for half a degree out of your range. Is this yeah. acceptable? Yes or no. So this has changed. Okay, now, so this, yeah. Okay, so now with that, with that data and with that yeah. information, so if we take the scenario that we're talking about all these excursions, do you have access to those excursion failings, the, the data? No, the typical scenario is um, <laughs> uh, with what we are doing. We, have, we we try to prevent the excursions. <laughs> so yeah. so this is it's it's a little bit like um, if you look at the automotive industry, uh, um, then you see um, uh, only a small amount of of really maybe critical accidents now because you 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 build your car better and better. So and this is a little bit what we are doing. So if our planning gets better and better. Yeah. Um, you, you go away from handling excursions. You, 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 you really make a, a predictive approach the, to plan better, to plan more accurate, put the, the right level of security on the right positions in your supply chain. Yeah. So, so, um, so in principle, um, we try to avoid excursions. <laughs> of course, of course, that's the objective. But but obviously they 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 do happen, and I'm just I, sure. I know that you're you're very um, you know you're very data driven decision making focused, and I, and I think something that's happened now around the coronavirus is it's made people appreciate and realise how important risk assessments are and being risk aware, but also that you follow data driven decision making guidelines instead of dates or pressure or whatever, and that, yeah. that was one of the problems that we had in the past. But one of the bigger problems was always the greenback and the money and also senior management awareness of attention to detail. And in so many cases, it was the money that was influencing the way certain things would be handled. And that's not the shipper's desire. And it's definitely not the consignee's desire. Yeah. So the transparency of this data and the transparency of a true assessment mm -hmm. on the digital cold chain is so important, not only for the decision making, but also for the ownership, the responsibility and the accountability of the parties that will be in that process. Yeah. And I believe 
that has to come downstream at the origins from the shipper or from a consignee perspective yeah, yeah. From a directive as to what must be done not not what could be done what must be done and how it must be handled and the reasons why yeah now what what we always take into account in our virtual uh, lane risk assessments the total cost of ownership yep so this is this is one of our main points we really focus on um because um it's nice if you have zero excursions. So this is maybe one part of the, of, of, of the thing. But, yeah. but um, uh, how much you pay extra on zero excursions? Yes. So, so this is what we do. We, we include uh, the total cost of ownership. This, this means what is the price of the box? Um, what, what is the transport costs? But what costs you also to handling an excursion? Because we all know in this industry, uh, uh, excursion costs you also some money if it's not really uh, harm your product, but it costs you some some work hours, yeah. compensation things. So this is we take into into in, into the total cost as well. So and 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 then you can really find out uh, what is the best total cost of ownership thing. Also, if it makes sense to combine solutions over the year. Yeah. You know, the seasonality, uh, when starts winter or summer? <laughs> I don't know, one is winter and summer, because um, uh, when I change a box, then I can make a decision, is it better or not? So, yeah. but, but if you ship around the world and you say, oh, maybe from January to, 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 to April, we use box number A. Yeah. And then we use box number two. And, and then we can show on a transport way, oh, you can save 20% uh, of the total costs with the same level of risk. Maybe zero risk, but 20% cheaper. Yeah, and and then you, this is also something what makes your supply chain greener, because um, makes it real sense to ship a, a perfect box in a temperature control truck. Hmm, you can do it if if you have enough money and you say I want to be sh safe as safe. Um, but uh, if you look on the, on the, on a CO two fingerprint, you can see oh I take a, a high performance box, yep. and I now don't need a temperature control truck for this maybe. Yep. So, so these are the, the things we really uh, look on this. Uh, and this is an important side effect. It's not the point to have no risk. The point is managing risk. Exactly. So, the acceptable level. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and know what is your risk? So, so, so in principle, this is, this is our topic to, to find out uh, what is your right level of risk for you as a company? Because if you accept a little risk and you see, you are greener and maybe also cheaper, but this happens, I don't know, 1% in uh, one time in five years. Maybe it's not something that is critical. Okay. And, and you've got that sort yeah. of matrix approach where people can actually see, you know, what, what's, a, what's a, um, a risk is acceptable or a risk tolerant area. And then it's yeah. up to them according to their own compliance or their own code of practice or whatever. Yeah, so they can put also the stability data of your product. In. If you know your product have a stability for, let's say, for 10 minutes above eight degrees, yeah. you can put this in. And yeah. then you see, okay, this was an excursion, but this may be something what is not harming your product. Yeah. So, so then you really understand, uh, is this something what, what, what you can do or is it something you can not do? And, and I think you can, what, what really are differences, you can also play with these tolerances. You know, if you look, look at your logger, yeah. a typical logger have a tolerance of a half a degree. Yeah. Uh, but the most people don't take into account these tolerances. Yes. Uh, in, in this, you can really put it in and say, if your logger shows two degrees and this really strict two degrees, hmm, then you are a little bit on risk because then it can be a 1.5 degrees as well. So yeah. I think this is um, what you can try out. Everything before you ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and just yeah. on all of the data and all of the information that you're finding and that you're getting back, yeah. what what would be the, I don't know, the three key messages that you would give to shippers that are the most critical for them to be aware of? Yeah, so so one part is, I think, um, know your lane. So, I mean, know your lane is not a uh, ship from, from London to, to Sydney. Uh, know your lane in a little bit more um, specific way. Uh, where is your uh, step uh, stop in between? What is your tarmac times? Um, uh, then um, understand um, what is what is the type of packaging you want to try out. Is it yeah. more something uh, where you say 
security and everything, uh, then uh, an, uh, I think another point is really for me, it's it's also the, the CO2 aspect. Yeah. So uh, is, is, is uh, the, the combination of the box together with your service level the right one? Yeah. And, and, and I, often, I have often discussions also with people from, from Air and say, yeah, we have a very good pharma service, uh, but people say comply, complain it's maybe expensive. But yeah. if you look at total costs, then you can reduce maybe the, 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 the price of the box. Because if you know you have a, a perfect uh, um, optimized two to eight supply chain, and you have only, let's say, five hours of tarmac time, then you can work also maybe with a cover, a yeah. tarmac blanket. So yeah. I think this is, this is uh, my, my free ones is lane, uh, right type of box, and fitting this right together. So right uh, uh, box uh, on, the, on, the, on the right lane. And then you have really something what what matches together. So. Okay, so now if I was sitting, if I was sitting and I wanted to send something and I didn't have the most qualified of people in my in my organization, would I be able to look up Smart CAE, log on, if I paid a fee or whatever mm -hmm. it was, log on, put my details in, and let it tell me what the recommendations would be for considerations yeah. real hard risks yeah. options options with packaging and if i chose packaging one two or three what it would mean against the risk is that how i could do that sure 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 we would we in in, in so so in, in principle what we have is uh, two models so one model is normally that people use our software yeah but in, and it's really not so complicated let me say after after four hours of training you can do it so it's not so highly complex okay. uh, you build a lot of in the background so so the usage is it's 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 relative to it. but but also we we see now a lot of people have uh, a really a, a, a pressure on their timing so yep. so they, then they say they, they specify us uh, the the lanes send us the the, the time steps and say, uh, can I deliver tomorrow some some uh, results for this? So, so this is really um, at the moment half of our work. Uh, really, it is very time critical things. Yep. Um, yeah. Just, okay. Yeah. And then and then people become familiar with Mr. Shippy. Mr. Shippy, yeah. So yeah, this you know this 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 this. this Kami comes from from idea from one of my uh, co co colleagues. She 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 told me, uh, can we not make it a little bit easier in a, in a, in a, to explain people? Because um, in, in principle, we can also write some some equations on a paper, but then yeah. people get frustrated and uh, what what the hell do they are doing? So 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 and and, and this is what the idea from uh, Mr. Shippy took. To, and you see, we have a lot of comics. If you make something on in, uh, on on LinkedIn. We always uh, have some comics because I think comics can be nice to explain things in a in a in a good way. Yeah, now Mr. Shippy with his wardrobe was very very clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, good it, to it hear that you like. It. <laughs> we got a lot of positive feedback on on LinkedIn when we post this, and uh, and and I, th I think what 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 we try to do is um, to make complicated things. Uh, Easy. So you know, it's like a Google uh, window. If you put in search, then thousands of computers around the world uh, working for you, but you see only one. Oh, search. And yeah. so, so this is what we try to. We make it as simple as possible, but in the background, we do quite complicated things. We solve part of differential equations and, and all this stuff. But um, sometimes to make things simple is more work than to make it complex. Exactly, and that, and then that's obviously that's obviously where the smart comes from before the CAE. Yes, sure. It's it comes from the from from our background because uh, as, as as I explained before, we work in in computer energy engineering. So this yeah. means um, build something for cars and so on. And the smart comes really from our from our, our initial start when we try to to make always models which uh, covers the problem, but be uh, but are fast, uh, easy to use. Um, because I think this is a really important point um, to make it compressed in a simple way is sometimes much harder yes. than to write <laughs> it uh, in in uh, a lot of different things. You know, this is this is this is the challenge, and, and this comes from, this is our DNA. So yeah, yeah no, no, hundred percent, hundred percent. Now, as far as the real time monitoring 
and the digital lane risk. Yes. Okay. So people would see that as either being a a blocker or or you know as being an extra burden. But in actual fact, in actual fact, it complements the the whole positive dynamics of doing it correctly the first yeah. time. Yeah. 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 So 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 I think um, this point is really a, a good thing. So um, I, I like really the idea of real time monitoring. It's really great. Yeah. But but one point is. Um, if your real-time loggers gives you alarms, alarms, and alarms, yeah. you are not so in a in a in a in a good shape. So so uh, if your if your planning is not good enough, because this is for what is he really complementary. So yeah. to to make a, a really good planning and then a real-time logger is really great because it he helps you in the in the in these raw events. Yeah, and uh, a real-time logger is really good if you have raw events. If if your 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 normal mode is uh, alarm, then maybe it's not the idea of a real-time logger. And and you can can combine this. We have now also made some some combinations where we use our our simulation together with the real-time logger. So yeah. so we get a signal back from the real-time logger, and with this new information, we may we make a new uh, predictive simulation, yeah. and then people can see. Okay, you will fail in ten hours. Yes, and this is a little bit different story because then you 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 get a little bit the both uh, of these two areas. So you get um, um, more predictive one with actual data. So so and I think this is really very complementary for, for what we see here. But you can you can also then prove that your predictive your forecasting is X percent accuracy if all the other influencing factors remain the same. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. And and I think this 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 gives also um, more more chance to 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 influence your process because yeah. at the moment if 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 your logger shows you oh you have now uh, a problem in Sydney Airport, what should I do? Uh, uh, if if I know you you will have a, a problem when you arrive at Sydney Airport, then you can do something. So yes. and this is this is a little bit the, the, the magic behind so to 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 bring this together. But for, I agree, more data for us is always good. If you have more data, we get better ideas about the real behavior of the supply chain. We we can make all the better simulations. So it's 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 really an ecosystem what we see. Yeah, and that's the that's the secret is in the data and the willingness of people to actually share the data. Yeah, this is really <laughs> so. This is really a good question. So, so because I think um, people have also to learn, sharing of data is a plus for all. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, uh, I think this is you know it's it's like uh, like sharing of knowledge. If you share uh, your knowledge with me, um, you you get not silly. So you know what I mean. So so and I think this is this is what we see also here. People should uh, accept. The data sharing uh, is is not giving out the the, the secrets. You, you, so so it's really something where where all can get a win out of it. If you do it right, uh, if you're open minded, I think yeah. this is really something. What 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 I see in the future, people should be more willing to 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 share. And that's that's one of the big challenges of of how to change because. It's something that no matter, I don't care who the person is, they will say, yeah, 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 we share everything. But then behind closed doors, they say, oh, <laughs> you don't give that away. You don't tell them this or you don't add this or you don't add that. And it's a, it's, 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 that's an, an, an illness in itself because it's like, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. I can give you one, one uh, short story on this. So we had uh, one, one scenario where we asked, uh, okay, can you give us uh, some, some lane data from, from uh, Berlin to, to Tokyo. And they said, oh, no, we can't give you Berlin to Tokyo, but we can give you Frankfurt to Osaka. So, and, and this is a little bit, uh, so, so, so it's not the same. It's not the same. So I think uh, this, is, this is really important. Um, you, you want not to share some dummy data or what is it? You should share the right data. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But it's, I, I don't understand it. It's a crazy thing uh, why people just, and, it, and it's silly little things, even sometimes, you know, at conferences or meetings and somebody says, oh, you know, can I have a copy? And, and, they, and then you see someone say, why do they want a copy of that? No, maybe we should keep it. Don't give it to them. And it's crazy, you know, this one-upmanship, because it's a little bit like if you're on a long distance run 
And if you're ahead, you can look behind. And as long as you keep the pace, you're always going to stay ahead. Yeah, but I think also so things have to change a little bit because often you see, you know, these qualification reports and things. Yeah, and yeah. You get yeah. it as a printed PDF. Uh, you get it as a PDF. But uh, and if you ask, hey, can I can I have the data in a digital form? Yep. No, no, we cannot share the data in a digital form. It's not possible. We can give you the PDF with uh, 80 pages of uh, of tables. Yep. Uh, uh, so, so I think this is, uh, yeah. A digital is not a PDF. It's, yes, exactly. It's exactly. Not digital. Yeah. If you can share, then it's digital, but not a PDF. It's, yeah. And it's the data, not the end result. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now you also mentioned you also mentioned something that we we exchanged on, and you were talking about how the role of of um, of standard test scenarios like ISTA profiles mm -hmm. will mm -hmm. change in the future. Can you just yeah. explain ISTA and the profiling, and also what you think should change in the future? Yeah, so, so so the current situation, what you have, it's in principle not bad, but it comes from the from from the history when everything is test driven. Yeah. So so if you have these you know these standard profile, ISTA profile, and others, uh, you know you test your box against such a profile in your yeah. climate chamber, and if this box passes, then you say it's brief qualified. That's great. Yeah. Uh, and if you have different boxes and you can check this against this profile. Uh, then you know, okay, all past these profile. Yeah, but uh, then you have like a pre-qualified standard. It's uh, that's fine. But but in in the in the in the in the old world, let's say in the in the test-driven world, you know, oh, a test in a chamber takes me 120 hours. Yeah. So I, I want to limit the number of tests I do. Exactly. So the pre-qualified was nice. You can say, oh yeah, I know um, this makes sense to go further because in principle it can do. Yeah, but 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 then um, if you ship to on a on a different lane, this pre-qualified makes not a lot of sense. So fast pre-qualified is always good because we can compare at some point the reality with the simulation. Yeah, uh, why yep. is this important? Because um, you want uh, you want to avoid to make uh, a typo. We yep. had one case at the beginning. Someone in the US told us uh, I put five degrees in the model and I get a totally wrong uh, temperature. Yep. Yeah, but this was five degrees Fahrenheit and not five degrees Celsius. So, yep. so and, and 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 to avoid these type of things, it's always good to have one cross check. And yep. for this, I see a qualification report, nice, because then you can compare. I did everything right, but after this, uh, you can do it in a virtual way. Uh, so, so, so you, only to give you an impression, uh, you can run ten thousand uh, of simulations on a normal computer in a day. Yeah. So this means ten thousand of of virtual shipments. So this means fifty or hundred years of real day. So uh, and and we are always joking here. Uh, I think last year we made more virtual tests than than all chambers around the world. Yeah. So uh, because we typically do five hundred to six hundred thousand virtual tests in a year more. My uh, God. So, so and, and, but but it, it costs you not more. Your computer, okay, costs you some power, but you know. It's just... Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's 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 incredible the way things are changing, and the more the more data, the better the simulation, the better the simulation, the better the forecast, the better the forecast, the better the reality, and everybody learns and everybody benefits from yeah. it. Yeah, and also the test people are happy about this because um, they 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 can make now the right tests. Yes. Because the problem is not, uh, you guys always make a test. It's like in the automotive industry. Uh, I will never drive a car which is not tested in reality. It's yes. only tested in my computer. I will never drive this car. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. So, so you make always at the end some, some tests. But here's the same. Uh, problem are the non-working tests. If yep. you make a final test and say, okay, this is the box. This is uh, the profile I want to test in reality. And yep. I do it. Then you can wait 120 hours. That's not a problem. Yeah. Because then, then it's done, but but the the, the problem are, are the tests you do in between, and 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 this is uh, at the moment uh, maybe also one reason when you have at the beginning told me about um, temperature excursions, uh, you can test not in reality all these scenarios in a virtual world you can test all these out you can see ah is this PCM in the right temperature is this product and and look at all these tolerances you have in a box. You know, uh, your product is five degrees plus minus three. Yep. The cool fact is, ah, uh, it's five degrees plus minus three degrees. So you know these tolerance. Uh, uh, we had one case when you look at all the tolerances in the right uh, level, uh, you have a range of ten percent of pass 
to 95% of cats. It's only the same box. Yeah. If you follow all the the the, no, the really, yeah. answers in the in the in the bad way. So, yeah. yeah. So so and I think this is really something what will change this. And it costs you not more, it costs you less. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. Yeah, that's data driven. <laughs> so yeah, and that's the beauty. That's the beauty of it, which people have got to become more accustomed and more familiar, and also more open about. Now, you also, you also, some of the terms that you use. There's over engineering in the mm -hmm. chain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, why? Yeah, I think it's it's uh, over the engineering comes from 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 my perspective from 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 the point um, you not know all the risk. So, so if you know you 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 have these let's say high performance container, no name yeah. on it, but really high performance container, and, yeah. and 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 then you take this high performance container and chip it temperature controlled, then uh, uh, put everything in a temperature controlled warehouse, uh, then then it's over engineered because uh, if you have a, a perfect supply chain, it's then it's over engineered. But if you have other lanes where you know. There's not so good control. There's maybe no service partner which can deliver you a pharma service or so have to put it on general cargo because maybe there is no other service available. There's only general cargo. Then this container makes totally sense and then it's not over-engineered. Then it's right engineered. So, yes, yes. And, and, and I think this is what, 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 what the point is. If you know really the, 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 the level of, of risk, then you can decide, okay, I take zero risk plus 30% security. Yep. Yep. Uh, but at the moment, we see really cases. Um, you have a, a box which is qualified with 120 hours at 40 degrees. Not not bad. But you ship then from 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 London Heathrow to Munich Airport. So it is. I think it's you have a few hours. 24 hours uh, 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 on relative mild conditions, maybe. So yes. so 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 then also uh, you can see without any simulation. Okay, you will survive. Uh, yeah. I'm sure you will survive, and and then it's over engineering. Yes, so, yes, yes. And, and, and what you see in the Corona situation is, um, you have not always the right um, packages available, yeah. because over engineering is you can do if you have enough of these high performance co containers available. Yeah. But now, if you ship more and more vaccines, you will see there's also a limit on containers. You, you cannot say, oh, I take this container, uh, it's available. You say, oh, I have to use this container because this is the only container I can give you. So uh, yes. this is what I see at Open Engineering. Okay, and that, yeah, yeah. And, and then that's also where your combination of data and forecasting can help people to sure. see whether they can survive with the different types, which is sure. which, is, sure. which sure. makes sense. Sure. Sure. Now, we, you've, you've mentioned there also now about the difference between virtual testing and, and practical testing, and you use the example of the car that you know no matter how much virtual testing on a car you still wouldn't drive one unless you knew it had been yeah, physically yeah. tested so we the, the how the when the why and the balance between the virtual testing and the physical testing that's that's another good balance that comes as well as a result of the data but with all that in mind where, where are we really in the digital process of the cold chain yeah that's a good question so it's a really good question so um, i think um if I go back to my car industry, where I come from, so well, then we are um, in a relative mid area of the, the car industry because um, we, we see um, more and more of these digital things, but we see a little bit of fragmented landscape. So, yeah. I mean, um, um, okay, we, we have now a lot of packaging companies around the world use our software for building the boxes. That's totally good. Uh, yeah. But but then uh, you get the, the 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 lane information in a PDF. So yep. and and you have to type it manually. Oh, uh, 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 so 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 uh, you you save uh, hundreds or thousands of hours in 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 in, in this virtual testing, and then uh, oh. Can you send me a PDF? Oh, this is not in a machine readable form. What is in? I have to type in. Uh, oh, is it local time or is it uh, UTC or uh, so? So uh, so so this is what 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 I see. Or you want to compare the simulation results with your measurements? And then we we get to oh we have these measurements, but not in an Excel file or in a data file. Oh, it's also in a PDF. So yep. then you can extract from the PDF the data, redigitize this, and compare and overlay this. We extra made a tool which take PDFs, put out the data in a, in a form that you compare. So, uh, so, 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 
and this is why I see, um, yes, it, go, it, it goes forward and we make some progress, but um, we, we are sometimes joking here. When we start seven years ago, we thought, okay, we do this now two years and then we have sol solved all these coaching problems. And now we are still here seven years uh, later and we see uh, more coming. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. uh, so, so this is a little bit, um, yeah, the point. So. I think it's a, it's a perpetual uh, <laughs> evolution because the more solutions that you come up with, the more other things you find then as a result. And, yeah. and it keeps it keeps going and going and going. Yeah. And it, it's going to be a big challenge for a long, long time. But those numbers of the billions of losses is madness and it's unacceptable. So things have to change, which also needs a change in mindset, in investing in training, you know, helping people understand why and making yeah. people appreciate the sensitivity and the importance of these products so that they understand why they're being sent. Yeah. Because it, it, you know, it can affect people's lives. It, yeah. It's got so much benefit, but also so much harm if it's not handled yeah. correctly. But, but, but this, is, this is also a reason why we, we make often webinars to, 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 uh, to post a link to, 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 to educate people more, uh, not uh, what a digital uh, cold chain is, it did, uh, to, to train people more what are the, 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 the sensible parameters you have. Yep. And, 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 a, and a digital coaching can ha help you also um, to, to get a better understanding what means this. Because yep. in reality, no one has tried out, oh, if I change the temperature of this fridge, uh, two degrees plus minus, what is the effect of losing my product in, 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 in I don't know, in South Africa? So, yep. so, so and, 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 and if people understand more these parameters, then they can ask also better questions to, to their vendors or to their supply chain partners. Yes, so yes. This is not only um, the point uh, we have something in a digital way, it's also uh, you get something back that people uh, get more trained to understand uh, what is over-engineered? What is the effect of a parameter? Um, what's the difference if I put it in a temperature control warehouse or not? Or uh, is there really a need for this temperature control? So I think this understanding uh, yep. is, is it's not something um, what you what you learn in, in, in school. It's more <laughs> you have to, to try it out. And uh, in, 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 in this digital twin, what you build for this. It allows you to try all these things, and and no one will will harm that your product is 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 spoiled. And no one will care about okay, it's too expensive your shipment because you try it out before you do it, and then you understand better. Yeah, this is the main point. It's not only the the number. Oh, you have one percent risk. It's also oh, if I change this parameter, oh, then it's ten percent. If I change the other direction, it's only half a percent. So exactly. you get. Um, a feeling on this so yeah yeah no it's always better the more knowledge the more understanding it's yeah. always better to know why rather than just be told what to do where to do it yeah. and when to do it so that why is crucial now let me ask you it might be a stupid question if it is i apologize stefan <laughs> no, we're talking now about pharma and obviously that everybody yeah. understands the importance of pharma but when you look at waste mm -hmm. and you look at problems with perishable yeah. You know, why is there not something similar being done there? Ooh, yeah, uh, I think this is a, this is a, a really uh, cool question because um, at the beginning um, we, we spoke also with some companies which are in the perishable business. Yeah. And and we we were a little bit not shocked maybe but surprised uh, that um, there is more acceptance of of uh, spoilage. Yep. So, so uh, let's make an example. If you go to your supermarket and you buy a mango, yeah, and the mango is is bad if you are at home. Um, everyone in the supply chain did the job; they get paid. Everything is fine. If your mango is maybe spoiled at the airport and you can't buy it, then someone will yep. care about this. Yep. Yep. Because then, uh, then it costs some money. But if if you are unhappy with your mango or with your bananas or whatever. Um, then you will never go to the supermarket and say, "Oh, I, I, I got one mango, and this mango was 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 not good anymore." So because it, it costs you, I don't know, three three, three euros. Uh, but uh, you know, so and I think this is a little bit the the the, the, the problem um, when when you look at perishables. It depends where this problem occurs. If the problem occurs at a step where 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 the money is not uh, coming in. Uh, from the customer, then it's a different story. 
But in pharma, I think the main point is, if you have an excursion, it costs you always money. It yeah. costs reputation, uh, uh, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. If if your if your if your mango is bad, you will always go in the next day, day to the to the same supermarket. And say okay, maybe uh, yeah, but <laughs> I buy another mango. But just because they're the poor relative, you know, they're still they're still the waste, and 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 some of the some of the 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 waste in the supply chain there again is is also at the very front end, and yeah. they over overproduce and don't have enough capacity to send, or it takes too long from harvest to you know to yeah. loading, etc., and packing. And it's it you know it just costs people. And then you were talking about money there. There's an awful lot of shipments that, through one reason or another, so whether it's favour, flexibility, or familiarity, they get accepted. And by the time they get to the midpoint, or by the time they get to the destination, they're already ruined. And yeah. straight away, then you've got an insurance claim, and you've got all that waste. And we, you know, yeah. we're talking about the we're talking about the planet now and responsibilities. I think you should start focusing on on a perishable. No, I, I'm, I'm I'm totally I agree with you. I think perishables is 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 it's really from the from the percentage of waste. There there's uh, uh, I think I, I read a study that it's fifty percent of uh, in the in the in the perishable cold chain, which is uh, not in perfect shape. Yeah. But but sometimes I think, higher. Sometimes higher. Yeah. So, uh, but but the, the problem it's it's not like uh, oh it is on one pellet and if you destroy this pellet you lose one million. If you have a, a farmer, then then the the, the 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 price is so high that people look more on this. So of course, which so, is why, unfortunately, in the whole world, it's the greenback that makes the big difference. But when you yeah. look, when you look at you know famine and and people not having enough food, it does not make sense to be wasting as much as we do. No, no, I'm, I'm totally with you. I think this is something where where sh uh, should be more more details go in with with these things so uh but uh, it, it i think it's harder to change yeah. um because for us as, as a company we can only help if if you have points where you have um possibilities yeah, yeah. to change yeah, yeah. so yeah. so uh, if you lose your 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 mango at home we can't help you not really anymore so then yeah yeah no that's 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 clear <laughs> that's clear we got the mango and the medicine. Big difference. Yeah. 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 This is Stefan. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's always lovely to see somebody who knows their subject matter so well and is so passionate about it. Um, I wish you and your organization great success. And, um, you know, it's helping in a great way with something that's so important for so many. So lovely. Thank really you very much for your time. time. And it was really very, very short. So if, uh, it feels uh, only 10 minutes. So it's really... Well, be believe you me, believe you me, it's 47 minutes. So um, <laughs> that's cool. We've had a good one there. So again, well done. Thank you very much. Thank you and, so much. Uh, see you soon and stay healthy. Bye. Yeah, likewise. Cheers. Bye.